Welcome to Pixitope Academy. Today we'll be discussing how to add a single camera and launch a new show using our latest release, Pixitope 2.0. We'll start by setting the machine role to standalone since we'll be working on only one machine. Pixtopes Director is designed with a virtual production workflow in mind. It's built around the main steps of production, reflected in its different views. Setup. This is dedicated to the initial technical configuration of your system, such as tracking and video routing. The production view is meant for the day-to-day -day operations. Here's where users are able to adjust, manipulate, and trigger graphical elements during a live broadcast. Now that we've gone familiar with the user interface, let's head back to the start view. And here you can see the shows panel. The shows panel lists all your local shows. It's important to note that projects cannot be opened directly. They need to be linked to a show. Start by clicking create new show and then select from existing project and link it to a project file. Select the project and create a new show. We're going to select continue with our open show. The launch panel is available in both setup and production view. Here, you'll only see the levels and control panels of your selected open show. Changes done in this view are stored in the open show. Now, if you navigate to show settings, we can begin to configure this project. Here, you can edit your project path, import configuration and calibration settings from another project, and adjust the default source settings. This will automatically populate any new video input or output with the source type, format, and color profile and color space selected here. These can always be adjusted later though under their appropriate panels in video I.O. or routing. With Pixtope 2.0, we now support the following sources or destinations. Aja video cards, Blackmagic Design Deck Link video cards. File. This is an experimental new feature allowing for video playback from a local media file. And NDI. And now that we've configured the settings specific to the show, we can go ahead and add a camera system. Click Add Camera System and pick a name for this camera. Under Camera and Lens, you can specify the film back or sensor size using the drop down menu under Camera Type. Next, we'll select the assigned tracking server. Select the camera tracking protocol. Our studio camera is currently using a FreeD D1 tracking protocol. And we can see that the status has updated, showing that we are receiving data from the tracking server. Under advanced, you have additional parameters for tracking adjustments. Under camera mount, you can select the type of mount setup you have for your camera. In our case, we have a tripod, so we'll select that. This then opens up the additional fields to fill in the height of the tripod, as well as the distance between the pivot points on the camera base. And you can refer to the diagram on the right to see where the measurements should cover. And under lens tracking, here you can select to enable a lens file and choose between a few of the ones offered in the dropdown by Pixtope. While there are templates available, these will never give a perfect result because every lens is unique even if they're from the same manufacturer and make. So you should ideally be generating a lens file for every lens you mount. And next you'll input the zoom and focus encoder limits based on what you see in the Pixtope editor. Object tracking. If you have an object that will be tracked in this production, this is where you'll add the object tracker group. Since we do not have any objects to track in this project, we're going to go ahead and move on to video IO. Now under video IO, you'll see your previously configured camera is already set as the input. And as we discussed, these default values are all set under show settings, but can also be adjusted here for the input type, video format, and color space. We're going to leave the input field as fill since we'll be using the internal Pixtope keyer for the virtual studio scene. Next, we're going to add our media output. We'll title our media output, Please note that it's critical to ensure your video input and output formats are the exact same for proper playback. And under routing, you're now going to add your input, which will be our camera, and now add an output, which is the monitor we just configured. Double check that your input source is the correct spigot for your machine. Now with our setup complete, we'll go ahead and go into the production view. 
and we'll go ahead and launch the virtual studio sample in editor. And once the level opens up, you can select video keyer and enable video keyer, which will allow you to select between our legacy model PX1 and the new PX2 internal keyer for Pixtope. Once you make your selection, you're going to select initialize key, which will open a new viewport window. Here, you'll draw on the background to select the values to be keyed, and then hit initialize key. And we're gonna select send key to output so that we can get an alpha of our key in the editor. Go ahead and select the close button. And now we can go ahead and begin to refine our key. We'll begin by adjusting the add luma key slider. You can see this specifically filling in the details of the talent's pants. Great, and now that the foreground is completely solid, let's go ahead and adjust the background slider by making sure the background is completely black. This ensures it will be transparent. And this is how we separate our talent from the background. Now we'll deselect send key to video output, and we can see our talent seamlessly transitioned into our virtual studio environment. Since we haven't cropped our internal comp plane yet, you can still see the edges of the studio on the corners of the plane. Once we know the talent's range of motion, we can adjust the comp plane to fit it. Next, we're just going to make sure that we have our talent the proper distance away from the camera. As you can see, he's just being projected onto a 2D card in front of our virtual camera. And what we can do is we can actually select perspective, top. Let's go ahead and highlight the virtual camera so you can see where it's placed in the set. And now we'll select the internal comp plane. And now you can adjust its position and angle here. And by holding down the mouse wheel, you can drag it from the camera to the internal comp plane to measure the distance and ensure it is the same as that of the real camera to our talent. Once we see this lines up, we can go back to perspective and review this in live. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and go back to director and we're going to launch the AR scene. And let's first ensure that enable video keyer is deselected. That way we don't have a despilled green screen in this video. Before we begin, let's go through world settings to make sure everything is optimized for this scene. We're going to make sure enable VCVig is selected. And under AR compositing, here we're going to make sure enable VCVig in editor is selected. And now that we have our AR scene open, we're going to go ahead and preview it live. Ooh, that's some pretty unfortunate placement of our CG tree. Let's jump back into director and under the objects tab, we can look at our CG objects in the scene, find our tree, select it. And now under transform, we can make real time adjustments to its placement. Let's go ahead and move it on the Z axis and maybe push a little more behind our talent on the Y axis. And let's just bring it a little more upstage. All right, this is looking a lot better. Now that we have our tree set up in the right position, let's go ahead and see if we can maybe change the lighting to fit with our talent more. We'll look up our directional light and we can get access to adjusting the lighting values as well using the same panel. So let's go ahead and just rotate this over so it's a bit more side light. Nice, and as you can see, this is also helping push the CG shadow of the tree across our set's floor. And we have it. So now we've been able to jump through both a virtual studio scene and an AR scene using Pixtope 2.0.